Hello, everybody. I'm so glad that you're here. And I can see all your beautiful faces. It's very exciting. I just wanted to thank the Friends of the Danville Library for sponsoring this show and to remind you to sign up for summer reading if you haven't already. All you have to do to do that is to go on our webpage, cccLib.org and slash summer and sign up for summer reading. We're doing it all online this year, so you don't even have to go to the library to pick it up. All right, have fun in the show. Take it over, Shoshana. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody, hi, how are you? My name is Shoshana, and I'm going to be your science teller host for the today. We're going to have a lot of science fun. Everyone, if you are ready to have some fun today, give me a thumbs up. If you're good with Zoom, you can click the thumbs up icon, or you can just look right in your camera and give me a thumbs up with your actual, real, physical thumbs. Awesome. We are ready to get started, and that means I'm going to turn it over to science teller Rick, and he is going to tell us what's going to happen and show us a bit of science. Hi, I'm Ricky, and I'm a science teller. A science teller is part scientist, part story, Teller. That's right. When you mix them together, you get a science teller. And that's someone who uses really cool experiments to tell an amazing story. story. That's right. You guys have been good at this. Today's story is called Dragons Return of the Ice Sorceress. Let's get started. A long, long, long time ago, there was a kingdom. In this kingdom, there was a castle. In this castle, there were two kids. Their names were Henry and Beth. Henry and Beth, however, were not supposed to be a castle. But one of their favorite things to do was to sneak in the places where they shouldn't be. Suddenly, they heard voices. Someone was coming. They started to run. They ran down the hall and wham, crashed into someone. They looked up thinking that it might be the castle guard, but they were wrong. It wasn't the castle guard at all. It was the last person they wanted to run into. Freeze, what are you doing in my castle? You two are in big trouble. Now come with me. Before the king could grab them, Henry and Beth ran, pushing past the king, ran down another long hall, and ran outside. Woo, that was a close call. Henry and Beth started running back to the village they were almost home when suddenly, look out! They dove to the ground just in time as something flew through the air right over their heads and disappeared into the forest. Wait a minute, wait a minute! Whoa! <clears throat> in the story, Henry and Beth saw something flying above their heads. Heads! Would you like to see what it looked like? Yes. Right here, I have a cooler. Inside this cooler, I have, whoa, <laughs> whoa, something cold. It's so cold, I have to wear these gloves in order to touch it. In this cooler, I have dry ice. Whoa. Now, is dry ice hot or cold? Oh. It's cold. It's so cold, it's 109 degrees below zero. And that's why I have to wear these gloves in order to touch it. Everyone, stick out your hand. Close your eyes. Imagine you're holding an ice cube. What starts happening to that ice cube? It's melting. melting. That's right. That means it's turning from a solid into a liquid. Okay, everyone, open your eyes. Hmm. 
Does dry ice melt? No. Does it turn wet like an ice cube? No. That's why it's called dry ice. Now, when you heat up dry ice, it turns from a solid, not into a liquid, but into a... Yeah. Gas. Now, what's it called when something turns from a solid into a gas? Evaporation? No. No, that's from a liquid to a gas. Is it called condensation? No. No, that's from a gas to a liquid. Is it called procrastination? No, I'll tell you what that means tomorrow. <laughs> when a solid turns into a gas, it's called Sublimation. Sublimation. Right here, I have one of my oldest pieces of equipment. It's called a film canister. I'm going to put a piece of dry ice in this film canister and it will start to sublimate or turn from a solid into a yeah. gas. Even though we can't see it, matter is gas. A matter is anything that takes up space. Now what takes up more space? A solid or a gas? A gas. A gas will expand and take up much of space as it can. Now when I put the dry ice in the film canister and put the lid on top, what do you think is going to happen? It's time to do our scientific guess, which is also called a hypothesis. <laughs> okay. All right, now let's see what happens. Oh, look at that, it's lovely made. Whoa. Uh -huh. Isn't that awesome? So cool. <laughs> I love it. All right, now I'm gonna put the lid on top. Now, oh my God! Uh, uh, Whoa, that happened so wow, fast! That was awesome! Whoa! Whoa! Wow! That was amazing! When we put the lid on top, we trapped the gas inside. The gas kept expanding, trying to find space, which in turn built up pressure inside of the film canister, which made it up into the air. And that's what it looked like when Henry and Beth saw something flying over their heads. That was cool. They didn't see what flew overhead, but Beth had an idea. Maybe that was the evil ice sorceress. But Henry laughed. That's just an old story people tell to scare their kids. She's not real. Hmm. Now what would you do? A, would you run home? Or B, would you fall into the forest? I don't know, what would you do? Oh boy. Come on, let's go see what it was. Henry grabbed Beth by the arm and together they ran towards the forest. 
Meanwhile, high atop the castle tower, someone was watching them. It's those two pesky kids. They're heading into the forest. I'll stop them. The guard raced down the long hall, jumped onto his horse, and rode to the edge of the forest. Right there, far in the distance, running through the trees, he spotted Henry and Beth. The guards started to chase them. Henry and Beth started to run. They were fast, but the guard's horse was faster. Oh, no. Henry and Beth need our help. Put your hands up and be like the trees in the forest. Whoa, good trees, everybody. He got closer and closer. The hoofbeats got louder and louder. He rode alongside them. Just as he reached out, about to grab them, they dove off the path and disappeared from sight. Ooh. Ooh, good job, everybody. Oh. I think it worked. Hmm? Hmm. He looked right. Then he looked left. The guards saw something, but it wasn't Henry and Beth. It wasn't a person at all. It was a mysterious white cloud of fog. Whoa. He felt very cold. Something wasn't right. He turned and rode off in the other direction. It was filling the entire forest. Henry and Beth peeked out from behind the old tree they were hiding behind. The guard was gone. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Oh. In the story, Henry and Beth saw something in the forest. It was a mysterious white cloud of... Oh. Oh. That's right! We're going to do an experiment to show you what that looked like. Do you remember what it's called when a solid turns into a gas? Sublimation. Sublimation. Right here, I have a graduated cylinder filled with water. I'm going to add dry ice to that water. What do you think is going to happen? It's time to make our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. Awesome. All right, everybody, it is time for another hypothesis. All right, this one is about that graduated cylinder he has filled with water. How big do we think that cloud of fog is going to get? Do you think it is going to fill the tube halfway with fog? Do you think it'll fill the tube all the way with fog? Or do you think it's going to spill over the top? Take a moment, think about what your scientific guess will be, otherwise known as your hypothesis. There we go. Oh boy, you're all so good at this. The answers are just flying in. Interesting. Seems like a lot of people agree on one particular answer. Like I said before, doesn't matter if your answer is right or wrong, it's just a hypothesis, and then we can base what actually happens, compare it to our guess. It's a very important scientific tool. Oh boy, all right. Looks like we have almost everybody. Oh, I almost forgot. I got to put my answer in as well. There we go. I'm pretty sure I know what it's going to be. Awesome. All right, I'm going to give everybody just a little bit longer to get all their answers in. Want to make sure everybody gets a chance to give their answer. Do How big do we think that cloud of fog is going to get? Do we think it's going to fill the tube halfway? Do we think it will fill the tube all the way? Or do we think it's going to go? over the top. All right, awesome. It looks like we have everybody's answers in. I'm going to end that and let's see the results. 
whoa, it looks like almost everybody thinks that fog is gonna spill over the top. We have a few people who think it'll fill the tube all the way, and a few people who think it's gonna fill the tube halfway. All excellent hypotheses, but there's only one way we're gonna figure out what the answer is, and that is by going back to science teller Rick, and he's gonna finish up that experiment, and we're gonna see what happens. All right, it's time to test out our theory. Let's see what happens. When we put the dry ice into water, the water makes the dry ice heat up and sublimate even faster. That allows us to see all the gas, just like a fog or a cloud. Wow. That's right. We can actually, whoa, pour it in our hands. Look at that. Whoa. We can even pour it in our lab coats. Oh. I can even pour it on you. And this is what it looked like when Henry and Beth saw the mysterious white fog. The guard was gone, but that's when they saw it. Right there, the fog. It was coming towards them. What would you do? Would you A, stay in the foggy forest? Or would you B, warn the king? I think I'd have to warn the king, right? That's not... That's Quickly, unusual. Henry and Beth ran back towards the castle to warn the king. Henry and Beth ran fast as they could. They saw the castle in the distance. Finally, they made it out of the forest. But they were too late. What? Oh no. Right there, standing in front of the castle, they saw her. It was the evil eye sorceress. <laughs> Suddenly, the trumpets blared. The castle gates blew open. And the knights marched out. But nobody could have known what was going to happen next. The evil eye sorceress stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. With a wave of the hand and flick of the wrist, she released bubbles of fog that rained down from the sky. When the bubbles popped, they released ice cold fog that froze the night solid. No. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> In the story, the evil ice sorceress stomps her feet. She claps her hands and she snaps her Fingers. Fingers, that's right. When she does, she makes bubbles of fog. We're gonna do an experiment to show you exactly what that looked like. <laughs> right here, I have a flask. In my flask is water. Now we're gonna add a chemical to this water. So, we're gonna add a piece of dry ice to the soapy filled water. Uh, what do you think's gonna happen? 
It's time for our scientific guess, also known as a hypothesis. Oh. Awesome. All right, everybody, it is time for another hypothesis. This one is about all of those foggy bubbles. I'm very excited about this one. So, how many bubbles do we think there's going to be? Do we think there's going to be a lot of tiny bubbles? Or do we think there's going to be one big bubble? Think about what might happen. We've got a flask. We've got water in it. We've got some soap. He's going to put in some dry ice. That dry ice will start to sublimate, turn into a gas. Oh boy, I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. Oh boy, you're so fast. All right, we've almost got, we've already almost got everybody's answers in. You are all so good at this. Oh boy, this is gonna be very interesting. I can't wait to show you all the answer. And I think we have, I think we have everybody's answer in. Awesome. So let's end this. And then let's find out what the answer is. Whoa, look at that. It looks like almost everyone thinks it's gonna be a lot of tiny little bubbles. We have a few people who think it's gonna be one big bubble. Both those answers are fine, but we wanna see what actually is gonna happen. And there's only one way that we can do that. And that is by going back to Science Teller Rick and seeing the rest of this experiment. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. There's the soap. All right. Now it's time to add the dry ice. Here we go. to a gas. The gas is filling up the soap. And that's why we're getting so many bubbles. Lots and lots of bubbles. This is really cool. When the bubbles pop, you can see the fog inside of them escape. It's really cool. And this is what it looked like when the evil ice sorceress made bubbles of fog. That. But it wasn't the nights that she wanted. <laughs> right there, she found who she was looking for. Slowly, she walked towards the king. She stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. And with a wave of the hand and flick of the wrist, she released a giant bubble of fog. The bubble popped, releasing an ice cold fog that froze the king solid. Then, ever so slowly, the evil ice sorceress turned around and looked out into the distance with a flash of her icy blue eyes. She caught Henry and Beth watching her. They started to run. Good idea. Everybody let's help them run. They arrived at a sign with two locations, Ooh. Fiery Mountains Good job. or Frozen Swamp. What would you do? Would you A, run to the fiery mountains, or would you B, 
head to the frozen swamp. Which would you do? Henry and Beth reached the base of the fiery mountains. There, it was said, the dragons lived. A dragon was Henry and Beth's only hope to stop the evil ice sorceress. Oh boy, I love dragons. They climbed up, up, and up the narrow rocky path, winding their way higher and higher into the mountains. With every step they took, they felt the ground getting warmer beneath their feet. As they got closer, they saw it was the opening to a cave. What would you do? Would you A, keep climbing, or B, go into the cave? What do you think? I think dragons might live in caves. I guess we're gonna find out. With whatever courage they had left, Henry and Beth stepped inside of the cave. At once they heard a deafening roar. <laughs> they looked up. They couldn't believe their eyes. They were standing face to face with a dragon. dragon. Two children in my mountain cave. What are you doing here? Okay, everybody. Henry and Beth needs our help again, okay? On three, yell, the evil ice sorceress is back, okay? You ready? One, two, three. The, the evil ice sorceress is back! My fire should be able to melt her. Whoa. The dragon flew up in the air. Henry and Beth felt the powerful wind in their face and hair. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> in this story, Henry and Beth flew through the air with the... Dragon! Dragon, that's right. While they were flying through the air, they felt how strong the wind was. We're gonna do an experiment to show you what that was like. Now, what's all around us that we need to breathe? <sighs> air. Now, is air a solid, a liquid, or a gas? That's right. Air is made out of tiny little particles, too small for us to see. But if we can't see it, how do we know it exists? Because we can feel it. We can also see the effects that it has on other objects. Right here, I have a leaf blower. The leaf blower sucks air through this end and shoots it out at 140 miles an hour. Another hypothesis. 
This one is about that toilet paper. What do we think is gonna happen to it when that leaf blower blows on it? Let's see, do we think that toilet paper is going to fly through the air? Do we think it's just gonna fall right to the ground? Do we think it will turn into a frog? I think somebody's gotten into my polls. All right, everybody, let's take a moment, think about our hypothesis, what we think is gonna happen to that toilet paper when that leaf blower gets turned on, it sucks in air and blasts it out at up to 140 miles or an hour. I think I know what's gonna happen. Oh, you just reminded me, I need to put my answer in. There we go, I'm pretty sure I know what's gonna happen. Awesome, I'll give everybody just a few more minutes everybody to get their answer in. Oh boy, I'm very excited for you to see what everyone thinks the answer is. Just a little bit longer, make sure everybody gets a chance. And awesome, all right. Looks like everybody has their answer in. So I'm gonna end that poll. Now let's take a look at the results. Wow, it looks like almost everybody thinks that toilet paper is gonna fly through the air. Some people think it's gonna fall right to the ground, and a few people think it's gonna turn into a frog. Well, let's see what's gonna happen. I like your answers, everybody. All right, but there's only one way we're gonna find out what the answer is, and that is by going back to science teller Rick, watching the rest of that experiment. Let's find out what's gonna happen. All right, now it's time to test out our theory. Fast moving air has lots of energy. When the energy comes into contact with another object, like the toilet paper, it makes the toilet paper fly through the air. And that's what it looked like when Henry and Beth flew through the air with the dragon. That was awesome. Flying through the air, the dragon saw the entire kingdom below. The castle was completely frozen in ice. Right there stood the evil ice sorceress. She was watching. The dragon landed in front of the castle and put Henry and Beth down. I'll be right back. The dragon took a deep breath and released a blast of... Fire! Fire! <laughs> Not even fire can melt me. She stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. And with a wave of the hand and a flick of the wrist, she released bubbles of fog that rained down on Henry and Beth. Just when they thought all hope was lost, Henry and Beth heard a sound. Whoa. The dragon spread its wings wide apart and covered Henry and Beth like a giant umbrella. The bubbles popped, releasing their ice cold fog that froze the dragon solid. Then the evil ice sorceress rose up into the air and started flying towards them. What would you do? Would you A, face the evil sorceress? Or would you be? Find a place to hide. Henry and Beth started to run. Good idea. Let's help Henry and run. Beth saw an open window in the castle. They jumped inside. Keep running. Down, down, down to the coal castle cellar. Everything in the cellar was completely frozen in ice, except for one thing an old wooden barrel. They opened the barrel. It was filled with salt. 
As they climbed inside the barrel, some salt spilled out onto the ground, and it started to melt the ice. Just then, someone kicked the door in. I can see you come out of that barrel. She stomped her feet. She clapped her hands. She snapped her fingers. The evil eye sorcerer started to wave her hand. But before the evil eye sorcerers could flick her wrist, Henry and Beth had an idea. They reached their hands inside of the barrel, grabbed a handful of salt, and on three, one, two, three, they threw it at her. All at once, the salt began to work. The evil eye sorceress broke out in a cold sweat and she watched as the salt melt through her icy skin. With one final shriek, the evil eye sorceress exploded into millions of tiny water droplets that fell like rain. And just like that, the evil eye sorceress was gone. This time, for good. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> In this story, Henry and Beth melted the evil eye sorceress with... Salt! Salt! She exploded into millions of ice droplets. We're gonna do an experiment to show you what that looked like. Okay, everyone, do like this. Okay, do it again. We breathe out CO2 or carbon dioxide. That's the same thing that dry ice is made out of. Dry ice is just a solid form of carbon dioxide. Inside this cartridge is carbon dioxide gas. When we open up this end, carbon dioxide escapes very, very fast. I'm gonna attach it to this tube. And what's inside of this tube? Nothing right now. We're gonna put water inside of the tube. We're going to pull this lever and release the carbon dioxide gas. Now, what do you think's gonna happen? It's time for our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. Awesome, everybody, it is time for another hypothesis. This time, it is about that CO2 or that carbon dioxide gas. So, we want to know what do we think is going to happen to the water in that tube when we pull that lever, release all of that CO2 gas, it's going to flow into that tube at a really high speed. Do we think? It's that water is going to evaporate, turn into a gas. Do we think it might get science teller Rick soaking wet? Or do we think it's gonna freeze? Hmm. All good possible answers. Take a moment, think about what you think might happen. You think about releasing that lever, all of that high pressure CO2 gas gets blasted out in that tube, hits the water. Yeah, do we think it's gonna evaporate? Do we think it'll get science teller Rick soaking wet? Or do we think it's gonna freeze? I'm just gonna give you a few more minutes to think about what might possibly happen, what your hypothesis is gonna be. Again, doesn't really matter if your hypothesis are right or wrong, it's just our scientific guess. We'll do the real experiment and find out what really is gonna happen. Awesome, we got a few more answers coming in. I think we just have a few other people who need to put their answers in. And awesome, we got everybody's answers in. So I am going to end this poll right now. Let's take a look at the results. Whoa, very interesting. Looks like it's split across all three. We have about a little over a third of people think it's gonna evaporate. Little more than that, think maybe it's gonna get Rick soaking wet. And a little less than a third, think it might freeze. All excellent hypotheses. But again, as we know, the only way we're gonna find out the real answer to that hypothesis is by finishing up that experiment. And the only way we're gonna do that 
just by going back and seeing what happens with Science Teller Rick. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what's going to happen. Now, let's count down from 10. Are you ready? Let's do it. And that's what it looked like when the evil ice sorceress exploded into thousands of little tiny droplets of water. Wow. Henry and Beth got right to work. They dragged the barrel outside the castle. Hmm. Lifted it high over their heads and dumped salt all over the dragon. Good idea. All they could do now was wait, and wait, and the salt began to melt the ice. The dragon started to move. It flapped its giant wings and flew into the air, flying over the kingdom. The dragon saw everything still covered in ice. It took a deep breath and released a blast of fire. fire. As the ice melted and the kingdom thawed out, a huge cloud of fog formed over the land. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! At the end of the story, the dragon took a deep breath and let out a blast of... Fire! Fire! That's right! The fire melted all the ice and left a big cloud of fog. Oh. This is an experiment to show you what that looked like. Right here, I have a bucket filled with hot water. Right here, I have dry ice. What do you think's gonna happen when I put the dry ice inside of the bucket of hot water? It's time to make our scientific guess, also called a hypothesis. I almost said the word hypothesis. Oh! Hypothesis! Awesome. All right, everybody. It is time for our final hypothesis. This one is about that bucket of hot water. So we want to know how much fog do we think there's going to be? Do we think there's going to be a little bit of fog? Do we think there's going to be a lot of bit of fog? Or do we think there's gonna be way too much fog? Oh boy, I can see your answers already coming in. Whoa, it looks like almost everybody thinks there's gonna be way too much fog. There's only one way that we are gonna find out the answer to that question, and of course, that is by going back to seeing the rest of this experiment. Wow. Okay, are you guys ready? I need your help counting down. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The ice is sublimating very fast because it's in hot water. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. So this cool. is awesome. Whoa, 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 ah. whoa, whoa, whoa. There's so whoa, much fog, whoa. it's filling the room. Whoa. Super cool!
It's sublimating at such a high rate. And that's exactly what it looked like when the kingdom started to thaw out again. The dragon waved goodbye to Henry and Beth and headed back to her home in the mountains. Everything returned to normal. Suddenly, someone called for Henry and Beth. It was the king. Then they remembered that they were in trouble for sneaking around the castle. Yeah, right. The king called for them again. This time, there was nowhere to hide. Henry, Beth. I've been looking everywhere for you. Because of what you did, our kingdom is safe. All hail Henry and Beth, and your dragon friend too. Yay! And from now on, you are allowed to sneak around the castle whenever you'd like. All right. <laughs> And that concludes Dragons, Return of the Ice Sorcerers. Did you have a good time? Hi. Awesome. So now I am going to show you how to do a bonus science experiment. So the first thing I need to do is get my camera set up here. Let me put it on the big screen so everyone will be able to watch it. There it is. Let me get that science cam up there. There we go. Everybody should be able to see that now. So right here, here are the things you're gonna need for this science experiment, all right? Right here, I have, this is just a cake pan. You can use any pan you have in the kitchen as long as it has high enough sides that you can put some water in it, that the water's not gonna spill everywhere. And I've got a little bit of water in here, uh, maybe about half an inch of water, not quite half an inch, just a little bit of water. Then I'm going to add to this water a whole lot of, oh boy, it's stuck in there. A whole lot of, oh, give me just one second, everybody. My ice is stuck. <laughs> see if I can get it out of here. That's the problem with ice, there we go. So. There we go, I got some ice. Gotta get those cubes of ice. Break them up a little bit if they stuck together, which they sometimes do if they sit to the side of your computer while you're doing a show. So let's get a bunch of ice all kind of together. There we go. You can see they're kind of floating around in the water. You want enough ice in there that they float a little bit. So I've got this whole line of ice. Then you're going to need some string. So this right here, this is uh, just regular cotton twine. You can use any kind of string. Uh, yarn works really, really well. The only thing is it has to be made of natural fibers. It can't be made of nylon or plastic. Uh, that won't work. It's gotta be uh, cotton or wool or something like that. Then you wanna get that string just a little bit wet. Then you're gonna lay that wet string over top of as many ice cubes as you can. And these ice cubes, I just made these regular ice cubes in my refrigerator at home. You can use store-bought ice cubes, any kind of ice cubes will work. There we go. So you just wanna, there we go. So I've got the string over as many ice cubes as I can. Then, give me just one second, let me move this around to a good angle so you can see it. Perfect. Then I'm going to add some salt. Yep, just regular salt like from your kitchen and you're gonna pour a whole lot of salt over that string. Yeah, you really wanna make sure you cover the string and the ice with a lot of that salt. Now, let's take a look at this situation, all right? We've got some ice, we've got some salt. Remember what happened in the story, what salt does to ice? We've got that, and we've got some string in there. So I'm gonna ask all of you, what do we think that's getting stuck to the bottom there. There we go. I want to move that so you can see it. Yeah, there we go. I want you all to take a moment and think about what you think might happen. We're going to give that a few minutes. You want to give it about 30 seconds while the string sits on top of the ice. And then, so think in your head, come up with a hypothesis, what you think might happen. And now that that time has passed, what you're going to do 
is you're gonna gently lift up and look at that. The string has stuck to the ice. That's right, totally stuck on that string there. Let me turn that around. See, oh boy, fell off a little bit. Whoop, there we go, it fell off. Isn't that so cool? So what's happening there is you put the string on, the salt goes on top, the salt melts the ice, that causes the string to sink a little bit into the ice cube. Then that cold water and that ice refreeze over the top and it makes like a little seal and the string, you can actually lift up the ice cubes. Now, if you have a little more time when you do this at home, you can wait even a little bit longer, let that string melt a little bit further into the ice cube and you can really lift up a whole lot of ice cubes. Awesome. You've all been an absolutely wonderful audience. It's been a pleasure performing for you. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Can we give everybody, including your uh, wonderful librarians, a big round of applause because you all did so well. <laughs> Thank you, library. If you, if you haven't signed up for the summer reading program yet, now is a great time to do that. I'm sure your amazing librarian can help you out with that. Everyone, have a wonderful day. Once again, my name is Shoshana. This is Science Tellers. You all have been awesome. Bye, thank everybody. Thank you, Shoshana. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. You were wonderful.